Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Duval, physical therapist and athletic trainer. I'm the program director at Sports Medicine of Atlanta's Orthopedic Manual Physical Therapy Fellowship Program and the Orthopedic Residency Program. Our Manual Therapy Fellowship Program is credentialed by the APTA as an Orthopedic Manual Therapy Fellowship Program. Within our program, we've had the opportunity to refine our practice philosophy. And here I am at Oakworks, and I'm illustrating the value of this electric high-low table, the PT300, to illustrate the features that can make the ergonomics and the patient outcomes better. This becomes relevant in the current era of healthcare reform. Given that we're shifting from procedural-based payment to outcome-based payment, it becomes very important that we have a table and an environment that we can evaluate impairments that limit the function so that treating the impairment will achieve the quickest route to getting a measurable functional outcome that's accountable and worthy of reimbursement. So to further illustrate this, we're looking at a practice philosophy that includes three components. Component one is joint mobility. Joint mobility would be defined that a joint is either hypermobile, hypomobile, or normal motion. If a joint is hypermobile, we're going to need to stabilize that joint. If it's hypomobile, we need to manipulate that joint. Follow the joint manipulation with neuromuscular re-education. Because with manipulation, if we go to a barrier, the joint's end range of motion, and then go beyond that barrier, we now have created new motion. The spindle was set for the old hypomobility. The spindle around this new motion that we've created needs to be reset. And that requires a neuromuscular re-education exercise. And I'm going to illustrate this for you. Following both the manipulation and the neuromuscular re-education is going to be the therapeutic activity or the ADL. We're going to put it in function, the new motion and the new control of motion into some purposeful, meaningful, and relevant function that's worthy of reimbursement. For if we're looking at a Berg balance or a functional reach tool before treatment, then after treatment, we should see a measurable change we would need to be able to use these techniques to achieve that measurable change. The first segment we're gonna work with is joint mobility, to restore joint mobility. But you would think, what if a joint is hypermobile? Surely that would not be manipulated. No, that joint itself would not. But if you think about that hypermobility, the joint above or joint below the joint that's hypermobile is probably hypomobile. So almost all therapy, sessions would include manipulation of the joint above or joint below the hypermobility to stop the fulcrum or the vectors of force that are causing the hypermobility to occur. So almost all patients would receive manipulation in some fashion, even if there is a segment that is hypermobile. So to illustrate these, I'd like to practically demonstrate it for you. So Brendan, come on in if you would, please lie here on your side facing me. Brennan's in the sideline position, and what I'll first do is PIVM, path, passive intervertebral motion testing, to feel if there's a segment that is hypermobile. And with this passive test, I'm simply going to first feel L5-S1's mobility. I'm feeling intraspinously, L4, L5. L3, L4, L2, L3, and then L1, L2. And as I passively mobilize his lumbar spine, I find the L2, 3 segment to be least mobile. This is an area that normal motion should occur, but at this point I'm going to call this a grade two hypomobility, slightly limited passive motion. So I'll flex his knee to that level and bring his hip into flexion and lumbar into flexion to where I feel that degree of flexion being taken up to this level L2-3. 
On the third spinous process, I'm putting my finger under that spinous process. I'm going to rotate Brennan down to that level and rotate him to where I feel it hit the L3 spinous process. Then I'm going to actually come in and put my hand on the L2 spinous process, the spinous process above, and ask Brennan to take a deep breath, and I'm going to segmentally increase that motion. And these are grade three mobilizations. Take a deep breath, and out. If I wanted to accentuate this, or if Brennan had greater amounts of spondylosis, degenerative changes, perhaps in the facet and the um, inter uh, disc area. We would want to have a technique to help with that and we'll use a pillow to do that. So come to sitting for me, Brennan, if you would, please. There you go. Now lay side lying. This is right about the level of the umbilicus or just a little superior to the umbilicus. And this is an Oakworks bolster that is very comfortable for the patient that puts him in a position to where I can actually cause right side bending of Brennan. With this right side bending position, I can do intralaminar myofascial release. I can do intralaminar muscle bending. And I can do quadratus lumborum stretching, and then even contract, relax. Brennan, I'm going to ask you to hike your hip. Perfect. Hold that. Fight me. Now relax. And encourage opening or gapping of the superior facets on his left side here. This side bending right, if we remember Friat's law, side bending occurs in an opposite direction of rotation in the lumbar spine. With that said, we can use his side bending right with rotation left to accentuate the manipulation that we just worked on. So again, in this position, I might go back to passive intervertebral motion testing. Granted, there's more mobility at the segment we just worked on because I just stretched it. But back into that area, I find some stiffness and hypomobility here. I'll flex him to the area. Block the inferior spinous process. Rotate, please and rotate him to the level now that he's in side bending, I have a greater degree of side bending for the manipulation technique. Excellent. Back onto your back, please. This technique would be followed by resetting the spindle, the neuromuscular re-education. And that's going to happen about the multifidus and the transverse abdominus muscles. That'll be the next segment. So stay tuned for the next segment, please. Mm -hmm.